So I'm actually standing in for uh, one of my uh, colleagues from uh, Camtech Israel who couldn't make it today. Um, this has also been on the cards and been presented many, many times to all of you. Now, before we continue into this presentation, I think I, I want to revert, revert back to, to Steve's opening, is that as much as we develop new machines, we're trying to introduce new technologies into this industry, there is no machine, and especially not inkjet printing, into this industry, which is just ready off the shelf after you've seen one presentation. We really need you uh, as, as PCB manufacturers to, to work with us to embrace this technology because are we there completely? We think we are, but we're learning every day as well. Uh, and, and we're really reaching out to all of you and saying, okay guys, if you're willing, if you're, if you're there, we can share an awful lot of details um, and we can, we can run into uh, all sorts of uh, trials and benchmarks together. But any presentation on this, um, I, think, I think partially we're ourselves to blame that we've been presenting this for the last four to five years, maybe even longer, um, and it's not ready yet. Yeah, as an industrial solution, in all honesty, it's not ready today. But we're nearly there. Um, and we need to work with all of you guys. So Camtech, first of all, Camtech designed this, this solder mask inkjet printing system. So it was really uh, uh, designed purely to do solder mask and to revolutionize the, the uh, printing uh, of solder mask in, in the PCB industry. Digitizing a solder mask process, yeah? and, 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 and that's where I really believe. Even though it has taken us quite some time, and even though it might still take us some time, the world will go digital. There's no two ways about it. And inkjet is the next technology that will definitely be, be, be starting to be adopted in, in the PCB manufacturing uh, industry. So it's a non-contract contact printing technology, multi-type 3D surfaces, direct design to print. A few of the advantages are better accuracy, overcoming alignment challenges, higher quality deposition, controlling material deposition, higher throughput yield, uh, uh, faster manufacturing cycle time, and follow a green trend. Now this, the green trend means no waste. You only have one machine. There's a lot less energy required. There are less people required. There's less space required. No chemicals. So first of all, a traditional process of solder mask could be surface prep, coating, exposure, either by, via analog or, or LDI or DI. You develop, you do a legend print, if you have a legend printer. Otherwise, that in its own right will add more steps if you don't have that yet. Uh, you do a final cure, and the Griffin process really will allow you to do data uh, uh, surface preparation first. Your, and we can use conventional surface preparations like your pumice or your um, mech etch uh, uh, processes, after which you can take it onto the machine <coughs> to do the printing, and you can take it into a final cure to give it its, its final hard bake. So, I'm not, I'm preaching to the wrong church if it's uh, circuit board manufacturers, they deal with these problems every day. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's the people that are buying the boards at the end that we actually all need to convince about the problems that we're struggling with. But, you know, uh, clearance around pads is a problem. You've got your process variations, uh, registration limitation, uh, solder dams are one of the biggest, is one of the biggest problems. How, how tight can you keep the dam? But not only that, how about the registration of it? Yeah, is, it is it completely too, is it, how do you fit the film to the board? Are you gonna use LDI, expensive, long time uh, uh, processes? Um, and or solder mask, hole penetration. Solder's placed throughout the panel and then removed. Cleaning processes, not bulletproof all the time. So advantages of a Griffin could be, first of all, process yield, you're reducing process stages by, uh, I would say, seven or eight production st steps, just like that. Uh, your production cycle, uh, it's also less of in time. You print the solder mask as well as the legend. And um, that's one other thing, thinking out of the box, me as a distributor, 
we, we embraced the JetRide technology from the previous uh, presentation as our own machine. And some people would say, well, aren't you in competition with when you do this machine as well that also prints legend? And we're like, no, not at all. On the contrary, it's complementary to each other. Yeah, because if you have a machine that does a solder mask, a green solder mask, and you have a white legend, and you have a, a, an inkjet printer that does blue, red, black, additionally, then you have everything covered that you can possibly want with only two machines. Yeah, so think a little bit out of the box, embracing new type of technologies. I'm still referring back to Steve's presentation there. Um, oh, sorry about that. At the moment, um, you're looking at 2.3 hours for 15 panels versus 5.3 hours, um, 15 panels in a traditional process. So uh, we're also, people talk about, well, if you have a printer, it's slower than my conventional process. No, it isn't. Um, and even if it is, uh, the advantages are still outweighing the, the speed. But we are getting a, quite a bit faster with inkjet printing every day. Mm -hmm. You need less manpower. And for, for solder mask, probably more than anything else, it's skilled labor. You cannot just get a guy off the street, put him in your solder mask department, and think you'll have the, the right board. Some, some people just tell us, well, the difference between being able to ship boards out of the door or, or having a delay means is, is, the, is the screen printer in a good shape today. And it still is. It's, it's skilled labor. Uh, and with, the with a process like this, you're reducing that as well. Um, and then there's footprint. A machine like this will only need this on footprint, whereas all the conventional processes together will have at least a minimum of 350 square meters. Uh, and it's green, no waste treatment required. Now, I, we don't even know all these figures, but we know there's a lot of waste treatment that circuit board manufacturers are, are dealing with every day. Uh, and that's getting less with inkjet printers. Accuracy, online registration per panel. Now, uh, there's a, 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 an example further on in this presentation, and, and a company like Camtech, coming from the AOI optical inspection industry, know a thing or two about registration. So some of that has been implemented into this machine as well, so that we can provide for full scaling and, and shift operations and even tell the machine to stop printing when it, when it doesn't meet the, 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 the standards and tolerance, tolerances that were preset by a CAM operator. Um, achieving zero clearance. Uh, for a while, we ourselves were thinking that the industry didn't want complete zero clearance uh, because old-fashioned style uh, making of boards required you needed some space around the pad so that the solder ball could grip on the on the laminate but it's no longer true all new technologies nowadays are really going into zero uh, technology effectively that makes it easier for inkjet printing because for us to to, to really control the edge around uh, a certain uh, area is is more difficult yeah a drop when it hits will spread you can predict it, but if you have many, many, many drops, then they will spread and they will react uh, to, to make the surface not as even as you would have with a, a photolithographical uh, process. Sorry. Uh, we have a currently, a, uh, pressing the wrong button again, a variety of uh, finishes. Mm -hmm. We can print glossy matte or semi-matte with the same ink. How is that achieved? By just adding more passes. So we would really say, in theory, a single pass provides us with a glossy ink and a double pass. Uh, and funny enough, our engineers, and Camtech has 40 people developing this system. They're dedicated to developing this system. Our engineers call it a, another pass. They call it contaminating the surface. Uh, you can, this, because it, it changes the appearance of the, of the surface by just printing little drops here and there. Uh, as we would say it here and there, it is in a predicted manner, though. Um, and that can be done in semi matte as well. We have full thickness control. Uh, as, as Mark uh, um, or the other question before was as well, uh, here we print uh, around 17 to 19 microns per layer. Um, so every other layer adds um, a, a little less than that 17 or 19, because as ink try to, it tries to, it, it won't be as hard as on top of each other. So the, the second pass will be 
between 15 to 17, and that's how you work that down. But it's really a 3D process. Um, so we have, therefore, thickness control. And you don't need to plug holes to avoid solder mass getting inside any of the holes. Simply, we can print around it. So you have cost advantages in material. It's an additive process, no material waste. Your capital equipment, it's, it's a lot less equipment, lower capex for all the port manufacturers. Now, is, it, is, it, is this true? Yes, if you're talking from uh, where I'm standing selling you this machine. Uh, of course, I understand that every board manufacturer will not switch off its, its conventional process today or tomorrow by, by starting to go into inkjet technology. But think out of the box, embrace new technologies, because it's going to happen. The world will go digital. There is, again, no two ways about it. Um, labor, touched on that before, smaller footprint. And also, this is a very critical uh, factor, shorter design to product cycle. Yeah, saving all these steps just from cam to print, uh, surface prep, print, and, and cure. Job done. So how do we achieve the perfect solder mask alignment? As I mentioned before, Camtech is one of the world leading AOI manufacturers, um, know a thing or two about um, optics. So we have an image acquisition phase. There's some of the, the cameras from the AOI system are basically converted over to the, uh, to the green, to the uh, to the Griffin. Um, so it, it, it does not only the alignment, it also provides full scaling and uh, a check on whether the printing can go ahead or not. You know, does it still within tolerance that you can preset? And after that, we have a printing phase. As you can see here, the print technology, UV technology behind it. And, and this is actually after a first stripe of printing, uh, you see, and this is after a full cycle print. And and you see this here as well. One of the advantages of, of inkjet printing is you don't need to print the full area. You only print there where you need it. Um, therefore, we also believe that you're gonna, we're going to go to savings of like up to 40%, as much as 40% uh, compared to your current ink usage. So it's a direct solder mass legend depositioning by inkjet technology. Your alignment is, is uh, um, real-time alignment with uh, built-in AOI. Uh, we follow 3D topography of the, of the surface. Um, Tack-free, so it's immediate ink drying with a built-in UV cure as well in this system. And uh, long mean time between failures, and it requires minimal maintenance. This is something, if you're going to ask me today, how much maintenance does it need? <laughs> Sorry about that. It might, <laughs> it might need uh, 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 an hour per day, depending on, on, on how, many, uh, how, how many hours you want to operate the machine. Um, it's something that we are seriously looking into to bring it always to, to a, a, a less time required for that. So accuracy, real-time panel composition, high drop directionality, high drop velocity. Also there, constantly developing. We're now going with the, the Griffin also into the 10 picoliter uh, drop size heads. Uh, with this machine, we're using Fuji Dimata uh, technology. And it's a very uniform drop size. It's a digital process. Um, so the reliability, auto inkjet pH maintenance. The system maintains itself from that point of view. Auto nozzle identification and compensation. It knows when something is not firing and, and not firing correctly or not firing at all. Um, high quality components, robust Camtech software that we know. It's compliant with all of this already. Um, as I mentioned, the 40 people within Camtech, eight of them are ink specialists. Um, Emma, am I right to use yes. this? Yes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, and if Emma says it, it is true. Um, so, um, but, but nevertheless, it doesn't mean that we're standing here st telling to everyone, look guys, buy this machine tomorrow, we're ready. No, 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 it means this is the work we've been doing. Um, and we need you just as much as you ultimately are going to need us to embrace this new technology in order to come to a, a faster, cleaner, cheaper uh, way of manufacturing. Um, a little bit more about the zero clearance. These are fairly recent pictures from traditional uh, to Griffin. Now this is very interesting because one would would actually 
consider this as a, as a sort of a, 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 a tolerance around it, but actually the ink is really to the edge of the conductor here. And this is a typical optical event, uh, um, uh, event that takes place with inkjet printing. Uh, it, you see that the, the, the drops have been fired to this very distance, but this, the, the flowing of the ink, so you'll have a little bit less um, um, uh, thickness of ink against uh, towards the conductor. But if you really measure it, it's, it's within two to four microns that you'll see the difference there, which can actually overcome, be, get, be overcome by adding another printing uh, phase or uh, work with it in a different way depending on the type of heads and the, and the nozzles that we're, that we're applying. Lines coverage here, same thing. Um, it's all 100% covered there. And, and it looks a little bit different uh, to, to traditional processes, but it's, um, it's something that has really uh, you know, been, been accepted by, by various customers already, and we're constantly testing to improve that, of course, as well. And here you see a bit more about the thickness. I think this is a, a glossy one, because you see, really, it follows the, the surface topography here. And here you see the thicknesses in the length of the pad and the, and the thickness of the, of the ink. So here we've got a 20, 22 micron layer of ink. And same for edges. So traditional, you have your, your, your uh, tolerance here, where now you really do not have that anymore. And we're filling everything up down to the very uh, wall, the edge of the conductor. Solder mass defined pads, that is a very interesting one always to tackle for an inkjet printer. Um, as you can see here, the definition is not as crisp and not as nice as you would expect or uh, to see from any conventional process, but also with the, over time, the introduction of smaller picoliter uh, uh, print heads will allow for sharper edge definition. Uh, here are some cross-section studies by customers. This is actually courtesy of TTM in the US who are using the system. Um, so prior to and then with the printing here, you see all these values. And this is, I would assume, uh, that's sort of a more matte. So I think there's an added layer here to that as well. Uh, with this thickness that is roughly 30 microns. So that, that would mean there's a second layer printed over it. Yeah, so at this moment we have uh, current models, one for, uh, with one color. We always call it, you can have a choice between green and green. Um, the one, and then you have a, a choice between green and white. Uh, we're not really planning with this machine to go to multiple colors legend. Uh, the focus is really to, to get the, uh, the solder mask ink uh, machine out there. Um, th th capacity wise, we're looking at, uh, if, you, if you take a 24 a a by 18 inch panel, um, if you have a, a, a glossy mm -hmm. surface, we're looking at roughly 35 sides uh, per hour that we can print, including a, a UV tack cure. If you're going to the mat, we're looking at uh, roughly 18 uh, of that same figure, yeah, so it slows it down. At the moment, we've got eight heads doing the uh, solder mass printing, two heads to do the legend printing, and the engineers are saying that before the end of Q1 next year, we'll have a machine that has 16 print heads, uh, which will almost double the capacity uh, that we mentioned before. Any questions on this one? <coughs> 